Hey and welcome to the first math video here at Shroom Lab. So this video will be about the gamma function. Of course this video can't cover every topic that has been worked out and published about the gamma function, but I want to take a closer look on why the gamma function is so unique in interpolating the factorials and how people actually came up with uh, the gamma function, so with a function that defines the factorials for all uh, real numbers. So on the title page here we can already see we have the recursion equation, we will go into that. We have the harmonic series, we will also take a look at it. And we have the derivation, so it has to do something with derivatives as well. So let's take a look at today's video content. We will first start with a motivation by taking a closer look at factorials on the integer. Um, probably you've already heard about that. Um, then we take a look how many and what conditions do we need to find or define an unique function that interpolates these factorials and then we try to find some hiding conditions in the harmonic series and after that I'm going to show you how one representation of the gamma function, the uh, Gauss product, has been found or how it can be derivated from some simple ideas. And finally there will be my own approach on the gamma function on defining the gamma function and not only the gamma function itself but um, all of its derivative in one catch. Um, we'll take a look at this just briefly because this is much more than it fits into a video. Additionally many of the proofs I'll just link to or completely skip them because they would just make this longer and longer and longer. So let's start with the factorial the faculty function x exclamation mark. So on the right side you see a graph. Uh, the blue dots they are x factorial and it's defined to be 0 factorial is 1, 1 factorial is 1 and x factorial is x times x minus 1 factorial. An example is 4 factorial is 24 because it's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So that's actually if you use that recursion formula then you can insert it uh, into itself and you can build up the chain. And the question is, so the main question this video is dedicated about because that's rather simple what we did um, now. I mean that's enough to understand the factorials. I mean they have many uses in combination theory and probability, but the function itself you understood by now. Um, the question in this video is what's happening between these dots? So we can draw a lot of things in between, but how do we get a graph that's really um, sophisticated? And before we start with anything, I just want to bring up um, a different recursion formula that's a bit nicer to handle and it's defined as g from 1, 1 is equal to 1 and g from x plus 1 is equal to x times g from x. And it's obvious that g from x is x minus 1 factorial, so the factorial function shifted by 1 to the right and um, we see this in the graph being the orange dots instead of the blue ones. So now we can start over and take a look at how we could interpolate this. So in pink we have the Euler gamma function. It's called Euler gamma function because Euler has first um, written about it or first found a solution and this function clearly goes through all the factorials at the integers and has some nice connection in between. 
but the yellow function does the same thing. I mean, in this case, it's just um, a multiplication with another function and the Euler gamma function. But uh, you can imagine that there are a zillion ways of drawing a function that satisfies that uh, the condition that it's one at x equals one and that it is equal to the factorial at every integer but in between it's just doing something. Um, I mean here we are taking a look at the shifted factorials so g from x we defined in the last sheet and I will only work with them in the remaining video so that's okay if we just work with that definition because it's just nicer to work with and it has been worked with a longer time from now and we if we take a look at the graph um, the yellow function just looks weird I, I, I don't like it and um, that's because it's not um, raising monotonously and there are a lot of other factors but well we can't really say by now which one is the right one or if there is even a right, right one so we need more conditions that brings us to the bohr mollerup theorem so the statement is if we have a function f from x and it has the properties that f from 1 equals 1 that f from x plus 1 is x time times f from x for x greater than 0 um, then we have from now only the conditions we have defined for the factorials or g from x earlier and if we take another third condition that the logarithm ln the natural logarithm of the function is convex we will take a look in a minute at what this means it's not that difficult in the interval x larger than zero then f from x is the Euler gamma function gamma from x uh, the link to the proof you can see below and uh, you can just google it i don't think you are able to copy it out of the video um, what is a convex function um, if we have two points um, in this video uh, on this picture I have in this video here they are called P and Q but I just named them A F from A and B F from B and if you take these two points and connect them with a line as you can see uh, in the picture below um, the graph of the function has to be under the line and this must be true for every two points you take in the whole interval you want the function to be convex that's everything it says so not difficult so let's do a quick recap what we uh, found out already so we um, have taken a look at the recursive equation so it's recursive because it just defines for the next step so you have to insert this equation f from x plus 1 equals x times f from x into itself um, to get to the higher values and these two criteria here they are just too few uh, to extend the factorials on the real numbers and um, an add-on to the convex uh, theory is that if the first derivative is rising continuously which means that the second derivative is larger than zero in the given interval then f is also convex so that's just another criteria for convexity and as soon as we find another appearance or at least that's the hope here that we can find somewhere else in mathematics an appearance of the factorials um, and from that experience appearance we want to um, drag out new criteria so we want to just find it somewhere else maybe we see the derivative of the gamma function or the factorials or itself just in another context and through looking there we are able to um, find another criteria and that's exactly what we are going to do 
with the harmonic series. So there is another video, actually the second math video on this channel will be about the harmonic series and all its derivatives. But for this video you just need to know without any proof that 1 divided by 1 plus, plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1 divided by 3 and so on till you get to 1 divided by n. Um, the sum of these inverse natural numbers is called the harmonic series and that there is a short short term expression for it which is the derivative of the gamma function from n divided by the gamma function from n plus 1 divided by n plus the Euler macaroni constant which is denoted gamma here and that's called the harmonic series with h n being a harmonic number we won't take a look at the proof here so h0 is obviously 0 because of the empty sum and the harmonic numbers are rising continuously just simple without a proof there are definitely proofs uh, to do this um, only positive terms are added so the second derivative will be always positive well you can't really talk of derivatives here and it's all a bit more complicated than it seems but it's all uh, I want to cover here. I don't know if I refer in the next video back to this, but uh, you can prove it easily yourself. For example, with uh, integral representation and there are many others. A consequence of the quotient between the first derivative of the gamma function and the gamma function itself rising continuously is that the logarithm of the gamma function has to be convex. And no matter what gamma function we use here, um, it really doesn't matter which gamma function we use in the factorials, uh, this clearly pins it down to be the Euler gamma function. Every other we use we might think of, every other way we might come up with connecting these individual factorials, uh, interpolating them in the real numbers, um, will give us a problem exactly if we come in with the harmonic series. So they really pin down the gamma function to be um, the Euler gamma function which is useful in respect to all the harmonic series. The other gamma function will fail here. The next thing and the last major topic on this video before I come to a kind of more experimental and not so solid field is uh, the Gaussian product. This is um, actually a representation for the gamma function which allows you to calculate it for all real numbers in a nice way. So we start off uh, with a very simple idea and that is we take a look at gamma from x plus n where um, x is, is just a number whatever and, and n also and uh, we can split this up in gamma from x times x times x plus 1 all the way up to n. So n is definitely pinned down here uh, as being a natural number. And of course we can do the same thing the other way around. So we can take n plus x minus 1 times n plus x minus 2 and so on until we get down to uh, gamma from n. And this is equivalent to n to the power of x, so of each of the individual brackets so we can factorize out the n and in combination with the large one, uh, with the last n, we will get n to the power of x and all these brackets where the n has been factorized out, um, here it's shown in pink, it's not that visible, but um, I guess you'll see it, and finally um, uh, gamma from n. We didn't change this. And if we take the limit of this from n to infinity, all the pink brackets will go to 1 as the divided by n term will uh, approach infinity and thus drag those extra fractions to 0. And therefore this will all go to 1. So we can state in the limit that gamma from x plus n divided by n to the power of x times gamma from n 
will go to 1 in the limit from n to infinity. And that's just an equation. And by plugging in the first one, it's uh, marked here in orange, we can say that um, we can solve this right for gamma from x. And then we get to the final Gaussian product, which um, provides this nice uh, limit expression, this kind of product for the gamma function from x. So if you were just interested in um, this little brief introduction of the gamma function in its uniqueness, its connection to the harmonic series and the derivation of the Gaussian product, you should quit here. Because now we are going to my own journey on finding gamma from x at the point in time where I didn't know about all of this and I just stumbled across the gamma function after um, my teacher gave me the task uh, to to solve uh, the harmonic series. I mean, we solved in school um, the series of the sum of natural numbers. And he kind of came up uh, with, can you solve this also for the harmonic series? And I thought maybe, well, it took three months and I never told him because school was over then. By then I didn't went to school anymore. Um, but I still want you to take a look at. There are some things I'm not entirely sure about in there. So there are, it's especially one mathematical, I say trick I do, which uh, I'm kind of skeptical if it works, but I'll shout it out then. So my basic idea was develop a Taylor series around one um, using the derivatives of the gamma function. I mean, if you um, prove that it has a convergent radius of one or a bit smaller, it's not a problem. You can use uh, the recursive equation from earlier to get through all higher numbers. For example, if you have gamma from 0 0.5, you get 1.5, 2.5. If you get it in the interval 0, 1, you get everything. And it has another very nice aspect. If you have um, this Taylor series based on derivatives, uh, between 0 and 1, you will get also every derivative of the gamma function. So you will not only get a way to calculate gamma for uh, real values, you will also get uh, with, the, with the same approach um, equations or series for all of its derivatives. So you unlock the treasure box of the gamma function all at once. And this was especially helpful to me since I was uh, working with the harmonic series, so I needed all derivatives of the gamma function uh, at once. And um, this, of course, uh, the main and most problematic uh, thing to get out of here is uh, the derivative values at one. So gamma from one, first derivative of gamma from one, second derivative of gamma from one, you can't know them. And you just know gamma from one is one from the definition. And finding these is really tedious work, ex especially for the higher ones. I mean, if you go into, in, into the harmonic series, which I do next time, you will see that there's a pattern emerging, making everything much easier for the higher coefficients. But at least the first one you have to do by hand because otherwise you don't get the correct values. And the uh, second one you do for checkup and then you can uh, stick to the pattern, but um, the pattern only works for the higher one. So for the first one, you need to do it by hand. And we do this now and we use only the recursive equation. So um, we just uh, we don't have that much fancy tools. I mean, I did not have that much mathematics at hand at this time. It's, just, I guess, more than three years ago that I did this, but I just want to present it to you. And it's really nice that we squeeze this out just from the recursive equation, gamma from x plus one equals x times gamma from x. I hope it's correct. If not, please tell me. So first we have that equation. Here we use n, gamma from n plus one equals n times gamma from n. First thing we do here, noted in orange, we take the derivative of the whole recursive equation. Then we have gamma first derivative from n plus one equals 
gamma from n plus n times first derivative of gamma from n. So in the next few bits and pieces, you clearly see that um, we can play around by inserting this recursive formula into itself. So the derivative of gamma from one, we just leave where it is. And since we don't know it, we just leave it there in the term it is. <coughs> but um, we can then say, okay, this gives us a value for gamma derivative from two. And so we take gamma derivative from three, which refers to gamma derivative from two and insert it again. And by reinserting this recursion formula into itself, we get um, this nice little term here marked in blue. And by sorting around of it, we can um, take out uh, a lot of these factors and remove all the brackets. And um, finally, we can uh, concatenate it into this nice sum, which shows us gamma derivative from four is equal to gamma from three plus gamma from four times uh, the sum to three minus one over k equals one gamma from k divided by gamma from k plus one plus uh, finally the gamma derivative from one. So it's only occurring once on the left side and once on the right side as a constant. So of course we don't only want to look at this uh, till four, we want to look at this for n. So we just insert n here because well this recursive inserting we can do this just as long as we want. It won't change this finite expression here. And by using the topmost uh, recursive formula for the derivative, we can simplify the left and the right side a little bit. And just by some basic equation wrangling, we can take over gamma from n as factor and we take over the um, sum over the gammas and we can divide them out and on both sides then we can add or in this case subtract since we need to subtract this uh, one divided by n so we will get a complete harmonic series from one to n on the left side and this gamma derivative from n divided by gamma from n i mean we have seen all this term here before at the solution of the harmonic series. So we basically worked this out just from um, taking the first derivative of the recursion formula of the gamma function. We worked here out that it uh, describes perfectly the harmonic series. But uh, we want to get further to find the actual value. So what we do is to integrate over n. Well, the quotient of the derivative of gamma uh, from n and gamma from n will go into the nice logarithm of gamma from n. And that's really a crucial step because we are getting rid of this gamma derivative where we can get our hands on because uh, we can just grab it. We, we have no definition for that. And it's very good that uh, we get this into the logarithm of the gamma function because we can express that with factorials and that's kind of doable. So the sum is really weird. We can just write an integration sign in front of it because um, the variable we are integrating over, the n, it's in the top of the sum. It's somehow the, the, the counter, no, not really the counter, but the boundary of the sum. So um, it makes absolutely no sense to integrate there. And we haven't as, don't have a solution for it, but it just put integration sign in front and forget about it. And on the right side, we have a constant being integrated and minus one over n will go into the logarithm. And then comes the crucial, crucial step. We pick out the orange uh, logarithm from gamma from n and we want to find a replacement so in the limit from n to infinity uh, the replacement function uh, equals the logarithm of gamma from n 
And to check this, we take the, uh, the difference between the logarithm from gamma from n and our replacement function and uh, let, go, let n go towards infinity. And if the difference gets to zero, then uh, we can just replace them in the limit. And it actually works here. I won't prove it, um, but you can easily prove it um, by just um, putting these two logarithms together. So uh, the orange one and the blue one is subtracted. You can uh, divide them with a simple logarithm rule in the argument. And then you should know that that on the right side is just a modified version of the Stirling equation. And they go in the limit to one. So the quotient in the logarithm goes to one for n for infinity. So the whole logarithm goes to zero. So the difference will go to zero. And that's the crucial step. So we just replace this in the limit. And now it comes to the crucial point. We take the derivative again. And I have no idea if I can put the derivative inside the limit, but I'm pretty sure that it's possible to um, take the derivative and then pull it into the limit, whereas n goes to infinity. But this is the only point where I'm, I'm, I, I could, out ma uh, could make out a potential mistake source. So as we put in the derivative, uh, miraculously the stirring formula just falls apart into the logarithm of n and this minus 1 divided by 2n and on the right side of course um, we will get our constant back and the logarithm will go back into minus 1 over n and the sum will just um, the integral will just vanish over that sum and since we are taking the limit from n to infinity all these 1 over 2n and 1 over n here marked in orange they just go to 0 and we can throw them away so in the final we have the limit from n goes to infinity over logarithm from n minus the harmonic series to n. And that's very well known. That's uh, the negative Euler macaroni constant because in the Euler macaroni constant they just swap places. But here we can just say it's the negative one. So we found the derivative, the first derivative of uh, gamma at x equals 1 and it's negative the Euler macaroni constant. That was quite some work but we did this without any additional uh, tools, without any fancy, fancy integral representation. We just squeezed that out of the recursive formula. So the next video will be about the harmonic series and how this is all entangled with the faculty function. and. Yeah, that's basically it. So uh, if you think there is anywhere an error I made here, please tell me. And otherwise, I hope you enjoyed it. The next video on this channel will be a chemistry one. So uh, keep looking out for that. But these math videos are just much quicker to produce since they don't fail. At least I guess this one was not a fail. Thank you for watching.